G'day and welcome to an exciting update video full of new features and additions to the game. Over the course of this video we'll be talking about the major updates to the game. There's quite a lot of information to digest in this update so I'll leave some timestamps in the description below to help you navigate to information you may be more interested in. Alternatively you can check out the Ancients Reborn Discord uh, in the version history channel and the roadmap channel to check out what I'm going over in this video. First, a big thank you to the dev team for all the effort they put in to this update and the testers. Uh, in this video, we'll be going over combat balancing, the PvP system, cosmetic changes, faction groups, player guides and tutorial improvements, and miscellaneous changes. First up is combat rebalancing. With the rebalance of weapons and equipment, the dev team have introduced a combat triangle in the game, where certain classes have advantages or disadvantages over other classes. The combat triangle is melee is strong against range, whereas range is strong against magic, and magic is strong against melee. This update applies to PvE and PvP, but keep in mind the majority of the mobs are melee based and some are magic based ones also. So you could wear melee armor as a ranger or mage to try and defend against those pesky melee mobs, uh, or linen against uh, mage type mobs to help uh, defend against them. Dexterity and Strength no longer provide defense or block stats. You now gain defense and block from the relevant weapon skill level for the weapon you have equipped and the defense skill. Range and Magic Weapons attack is decreased the further you are away from a player when attacking them with a maximum of a 50% reduction at max range. This one only applies in PvP. Another change is the accuracy of Axe users has been increased uh, and the armor stats have been changed to more fit the combat triangle that is introduced. Combat level is now calculated using the combat level cap of 130. Uh, so my understanding of this one, people who manage to get above level 130, this stat will still visibly show your level as 133 or 135, but mobs will still aggro you as if you are 130. NPC stats have been rebalanced due to the combat rebalance also. Now on an exciting update uh, for most, the new PvP system. Uh, with the new PvP system there's quite a big turnaround in how it all works now, which will accommodate for a variety of different players or playstyles. The existing PvP zones will not change. We still will have our grey and orange and red skull zones. With this update the dev team have introduced a new safe zone locations and PvP skull status indicators. The new safe zone locations are all buildings inside towns and some portal locations if not all. I haven't tested this yet. Um, and no PvP can ever take place in these locations. PvP skull status can change when you gain threat. All players initially start as innocent and have a threat level of 0 and can be a maximum of 6. Threat increases by 1 each time you kill an innocent player. If you were killed as an innocent player, your killer will take 10% of your AP ancient points and each droppable item stack in your inventory um, has a 10% chance of dropping where you died which can be looted by any player and the innocent player that was killed gains the immune PvP status for 3 hours which only counts down while you're in game. You can lose your immunity if you decide to initiate in PvP. The immune player can still be attacked and killed However, on death, they won't drop any items or lose any items. When it comes to what items will drop, it must not be equipped or equippable. It is not a skin, it is not currency or credits, and can be traded on the marketplace. So some good examples of stuff that will drop are trash items from mobs, gems up to flawless, some fish, and gathering resources. So uh, skills really need to be careful with this one. As threat level increases, the PvP skull status of a player will be displayed to the right of their name. There are three PvP skulls which have positive and negative effects. They are Grey Skull activates at threat level 1, the Orange Skull which activates at threat level 3, and the Red Skull which activates at threat level 6. So you would need to kill 6 people to get to Red Skull. The skull colour acts the same way as the skull zones. For example, the grey skull, you can only be attacked or attack players five levels above or below your level. Um, the only difference here is that you can be attacked anywhere in the world except a safe zone, one of the new PvP safe zones, so inside of the town buildings. 
When you have a skull status active, you cannot attack people without them either having a skull status of their own or being in a skull zone. Other players, however, in the world can attack you at any time so long as you're not in one of those new PvP safe zones. Keep in mind attacking and killing players with a skull status does not increase your own threat level, so you're free to attack those guys as much as you like uh, without any uh, repercussions other than you know them getting angry. Each skull status has its own duration. Grey is 1 hour, orange is 12 hours and red is 24 hours. You cannot decrease this in any way, you must wait until the time has expired uh, and again, the luck immunity, you must be online for this counter to go down so you can't just log off the game and then come back and be right to go. There are a lot of pros and cons to having skull statuses on. For example, if you die, you normally lose 10% AP and call it a day. Now, AP amount increases as your skull level does. So, innocent loses 10% um, AP, grey skull loses 10%. Uh, then it goes up to orange, which will lose up to 25% of your ancient points. And then red skull loses 50% AP. On a plus side, you can gain more AP from monsters in PvP zones, dependent on your skull status. Uh, innocent and immune, you still gain the, the normal rate, which is 100%. Uh, grey and skull gain uh, 125%. Uh, orange, you gain 150% AP. And then red skull, you gain a whopping 200% increased AP gain from uh, mobs. When you die with a PvP skull status, um, all equipped items lose their percentage determined by the colour. A grey skull, you lose 10% durability of all equipped items. Orange, you lose 25%. And red skull, you lose a massive 50% durability. When you die, you also lose combat XP on death. Uh, it's 10% if you're a grey skull, 25% if you're orange, and 50% if you're red skull. So uh, just make sure you're all leveled up before going to red skull, just to keep your XP nice and safe. And uh, one of my favourites, and probably the biggest uh, update to the new PvP system, is um, people can drop loot on death. Uh, when you die without the immune status, each droppable item or stack in your bag uh, has a chance of being dropped where you died. You can pick up these dropped items and the percentage chance of an item or stack dropping chances are dependent on your skull status. Uh, innocent is 10% chance, grey skull is 25% chance, orange skull is 50% chance and red skull is 100% chance. So you don't really want to die as a red skull, uh, there's a very high chance you just drop everything. Uh, other than that, the threat status, there are two additional status types. Uh, there is retaliation which is given to a player who is attacked by another player and it lasts one minute uh, and the attacker status is given to the player that attacks another player. These states will determine if a player will gain threat or not so the person with the retaliation status won't get the threat however the attacker will. Uh, now I want to address some of the uh, cosmetic changes um, in the game. So the first one they've added a skin item to the player profiles on the equipment info pop-up. Um, they've also replaced guardian armor icons and they've also now added um, the guardian weapon skins to the shop. Uh, these are separate from the armor uh, on the cash shop so they're not like a bundle um, and they are not tradable. Uh, and here's an exciting one that uh, the community has really wanted. Uh, we can now get the plus two equipment skins. So dismantling plus two equipment now gives parts and skins for that equipment. So this is going to be a good one for those who want the uh, the black armor. So I know there's a few people in Discord that want that one uh, as a skin. Uh, faction groups um, have been added to the game. Uh, so multiple factions can now be restricted uh, to the same server. Um, faction tags will appear on players when on a faction group server and faction tags are shown in the chat when on a faction group server. Uh, in this update the devs are trialing some factions together. We got uh, Ad Adrea and Borga, I probably butchered that, um, uh, will join together and then Caldera and Eleanor will join together. Um, uh, this is not a merge, so the marketplace and the guilds will still be separate. Uh, this should introduce a bit of activity on the servers and spark a bit of PvP, I dare say, um, between the two different servers. 
Uh, next one to go over is player guides and tutorial uh, improvements. Um, in the game, there a new player guide has been added and is now visible in your player profile screen. And the PvP guide, which you can access this by um, clicking on the little thread icon in your player profile. Um, chest items have also been added. Um, this will probably be most likely used for the task system when it comes out, but um, only a tutorial chest is available at the moment. Uh, and in the notes here, it's got some changes to the tutorial and uh, rewards. Uh, now for miscellaneous changes, these are just changes um, that I couldn't really put in any of the above categories uh, too, too accurately. Um, so there's quite a few cool ones here. So um, they've now added PvP music, which activates while attacking or being attacked by players. Uh, there's now a new death sound effect for when another player dies. When you're in your UI and you're getting attacked, there will now be an indicator shown on the screen. You now have uh, an under attack sound effect, which plays when you are initially being attacked. Now added a mob class type to the NPC information pop-up. Um, this one I personally will find uh, useful when I'm going out grinding mobs, um, so I know which armor I need to wear against what kind of mobs. More Frost Strand has been added to Ice Mountain. Uh, I guess this one was requested quite a bit from the community. Now added killed by messages in nearby chat when a player near you or you die in a PvP related death. So you can't be secretly stealth killed while you're fishing on the, uh, the uh, Orc Island. Uh, we can now toggle transparent windows um, so that when you're in full screen you can kind of see through it a little bit. In addition to the game, in my opinion, uh, AP can now be gained when gathering in PvP zones. So like if you're fishing, you get XP and you get like 10% AP from that, uh, from what I understood earlier. Um, it's a good one for those crafters and skillers out there who just want to contribute to the guild and don't want to do a bit of combat. Uh, here's another incentive for PvP out there um, and just going back to town more often. AP can now only be donated when you're in a PvP safe zone. So those are the buildings inside those towns. Um, you can't donate while you're just farming out uh, in like Ice Mountain or anywhere like that anymore. I dare say that's going to make for some uh, pretty hairy situations. I'm going to uh, enjoy basking in that one for a little bit when that happens. <laughs> Uh, reduced costs for scrolls from previously 100k to 10k per scroll. Uh, this is going to be super useful for those who want to do those build changes um, and more cost effective for sure. Uh, there's also now no more hidden HP bonus from enhanced equipment. Uh, this has now been removed and now all players receive the bonus that a, uh, for example, plus two equipment would provide. Enhanced equipment that is. Uh, there are lots to go over and investigate in this update. Um, there are a few that I didn't cover in this video, which are mostly fixes, uh, which can be found on the AR Discord um, version history channel in the, uh, in the Discord there. Uh, again, thank you for taking the time to watch my video. Uh, if you enjoyed it or found it helpful, uh, please like, subscribe and share for more videos in the future.